2를 In this lab, we're looking at the movement coordination aspect, and uh, um, the equipment that you see here are designed to pick up movements of the joints in uh, babies that we bring back after they've received treatment, um, so that we can actually see whether they're moving their joints appropriately, where they're, whether their limb movements are coordinated, whether they have good hand-eye coordination. She, she moves quickly now, she, 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 she interacts with us a lot more, I think she's crafty, I know it's not crafty but she, I think she knows kind of when to stop. <laughs> and she's always so pleased with herself and she kind of, she'll, she'll get up and look to us and look what I've done, I'm so happy with myself. Babies who have had a period of lack of oxygen to the brain during the first few days of life um, have suffered any damage to two areas. One area is area responsible for memory development of memory function and the other one is the area that's responsible for movement coordination. Okay. Just need to put these back on your hair. Hello. Hello. So they put them in the shop a lot of the time. We relate the findings that we get from these investigations back to the brain images that we have obtained. So by correlating the results of their behavior with the brain imaging results, we are able to establish whether the two are related if there has been damage. What we're looking at here is angry faces and fearful faces that either are looking directly at the baby or looking to the side where there's an object. And we're interested in seeing if they understand the difference in the emotional message depending on where the eyes are looking. So for example, if I've got a scared face and I'm looking to the side, that's a signal to you that there's something dangerous and you kind of need to respond and be ready. Whereas if I've got a fearful face and I'm looking at you, it's less of a threatening signal to you. Well, we're looking at a variety of conditions from things like preterm birth that can have an impact on later school progress to other things that have a more direct brain injury like stroke or epilepsy, also babies who are born with visual impairments and a range of conditions like this. Mm. Very easy to understand. Annoying. This At 20 week scan, the baby was diagnosed with a severe condition and the professional medical staff at UCL were just outstanding to support us through that bereavement and loss. Um, so we wanted to give, I wanted to give something back to the to research at UCL. <laughs> we come across lots of preterm babies <coughs> who have visual problems but also have social and communication problems. So it's interesting from a professional point of view as well as a parent point of view. <laughs> yes, yes, darling. Ah, <gasps> oh, what are you doing? 
Which is what we're doing. Which is what Mm. We're trying to link it not necessarily to a specific disease, but to a more specific later outcome, having problems with maths, having autism, or other difficulties along those lines. And those kinds of problems can occur across a range of diseases, and that's why we're studying quite a wide range of conditions. We're getting to that stage where we're identifying these abnormalities. I think the next step for our work, or what we're still really working on a lot too, is being able to, as we said, follow the babies up, and that just takes time for these babies to develop and grow older into children. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.